You're listening to the British Baseball Podcast. Hello, baseball family. Matthew here again with Australia's 106th favourite podcast about baseball. And I'm delighted to have alongside me David Martin Byers and Matt Cliff of the Liverpool Trojans Baseball Club, and we're here to talk about blind baseball. But before we get into these tasty bits on blind baseball, these two fine gentlemen, uh, let's have a quick recap about what's been happening in the world of UK blind baseball. Recently, on the 20th of August in 2022, um, we had the Blind Baseball International Cup, which was held in Holland. Uh, Matt Cliff, if you could help me pronounce this, because I am king at butchering names. Uh, Sportland Gwed de Hammond in Beck, is it? Beak or beak. Beak. Well, do you know, what? of all the things I thought I was going to get wrong, then beak was not the one. I thought it would have been the really long, <laughs> long uh, 400 point in Scrabble word at the beginning. Um, but yeah, there was a tournament held there in Beak on the 20th of August, where GB, the, it was a lot of, it was like a round robin tournament, quite a lot of teams involved. And GB played Italy first off, which was nil nil. Then he went on to face France in the afternoon, which was a 10-1 victory. Take that, France, and you break dancing in the Olympics. And then you went on to face the USA in the semifinals, which was 1-3-2. And that got you through to the gold medal game on the 21st against the Italians. But we'll come across that in a minute. Matt, do you want to tell us about that tournament and uh, any of your highlights from the, that on and off the field? Yeah, it was a, it was a, an in, interesting event. Um, I really um, enjoyed the tournament that we were... A, a relatively novice team going out um, and we didn't know an awful lot um, about the teams going into it. Obviously, we, we had COVID slap bang in the middle of development of the sport. So we went into uh, a group with uh, with France and Italy, as you say. Um, and I think we were just hoping to, to get something from it. I don't think we necessarily expected to come out to the groups. So obviously, we weren't there to lose. We were always there to, to have a go. Um, but we, we, we knew in the, the last cup event that there had been, that the Italians had won, the French had come third, and the, the Cubans who'd come second weren't coming to this tournament, so we were we were definitely underdogs. Um, we, we, we went out and played the first game against the Italians, uh, which finished nil-nil. Now, given that the Italians have been playing for nearly 30 years, they invented the sport, they've got a full competitive structure, um, which we haven't, um, a nil-nil, um, it was like winning gold in the first match, to be honest. We were absolutely made up. Um, the Italians just showed us a, a lot of respect and a, uh, a, a lot of love. Love, to be honest. They were, they were great, actually. Um, we um, went back to the dugout, had a bit of a break, rest, got ourselves, got ourselves together uh, and went out again against the French. We'd seen the Italians had played their game against the French um, and, and won convincingly. Um, so we were sort of questioning what we were going to do, I guess. Um, and we went out and did the same. We, we beat them convincingly. Uh, everyone in the, in the squad got to play in that game. So everyone contributed, which was obviously uh, a better way to, to do it. Um, and yeah, we, we, we come out of the groups um, second, uh, went off to play the semifinals against the USA, which is just amazing because you think, well, I, at least I think, uh, USA when I think baseball and I'm guessing most other people do as well so um, that was really exciting really tense um, literally um, last ball two outs uh, and we were through all in the, the blink of an eye uh, and when your eyes don't work those blinks happen all the time so it was uh, really quite exciting um, and then we went off um, then really had to, to regroup and get ready for, for the next day um, and get ourselves ready for, for the final um, which you know didn't go our way, um, but we were we were playing for a medal, um, and that was an awful lot more than we expected. Um, we give it a really good go against the Italians. Um, hi- highlights um, for me, I have to say, were we're getting my, my first run under my belt, to be honest. Um, and yeah, it was just really really exciting, to be honest. I've been involved in sports, different things for a number of years. Um, and I can't remember running out of the pitch the way I did, dancing around, hugging all my teammates, and that was the the semi final victory. Um, so you know, getting to the final was just amazing. Yeah, that final game you said you lost to the Italians. It was a ten nil 
uh, defeat. But again, what a momentous occasion! You come away from that tournament with a silver medal, with with the experience that that you had within that tournament. It's, you know, it's it's fantastic. It just sort of adds to the great summer of, of British baseball, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, we've um, yeah, we, we we all come away with 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 memories we'll cherish, and we, to be honest, we've all come away hungry. Um, we knew the Italians were the best, as as I said before, they invented the game. Um, so we're, 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 we come back, we regroup, um, getting ourselves ready um, to go again next time there's a tournament. But there's a lot more for us to do, you know, domestically in this country, really, and really develop the game. Yeah, like you said before, the, the, the Italians have, have pretty much been at this for 30 years and have, have created the, the sport. So what can British baseball as a community and the clubs learn from the Italians to get British baseball established in the UK? I think it's 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 the fundamentals of, of any sport de- development. For us to develop the sport in the UK, we, mu- we need more players playing it, more teams playing it, and we need some competitive structure. Going out to um, the Netherlands to play in this tournament, the only sort of real element of competitive baseball had been playing amongst ourselves, really, in, in some training sessions. So what British baseball um, really needs to do is... is Needs to support the UK Blind Baseball Association in linking up with mainstream baseball clubs and helping develop new blind baseball teams, as we're, we're trying to do in Liverpool at the moment. Yeah. And how did you form your partnership with the Trojans? Uh, well, t- to be honest, we um, it was a case of looking looking what was around. So I, I say I've been running a, a, a group called Savvy Northwest. We deliver a range of different visually impaired multi sports. Been running that since about two thousand nine, and we've been involved in sports like uh, cricket, cycling, football, tennis, goalball, loads of different things that we've been uh, involved in. And uh, we came across baseball and really were looking for someone who knew what they were doing because um, it was it was all really quite new to us after we'd been introduced to blind baseball. So we had luck. We came across um, the Trojans, um, got in touch, uh, and they've been fantastic from day one, really. Dave, do you want to shed any light on, on this partnership? How excited are you to get involved in this opportunity? Well, it, um, it came from a, a committee chat for me, my personal involvement. And there was a, a shout out that came um, for people to go down to training. And at that point, uh, my first training session was down at the, the it was a cricket club in Wavertree. So, so I came down not knowing anything about uh, blind baseball. I, I just found out it existed. Um, I didn't know the, the mechanics of it, how it worked. So I, I came down really, for me, it was it was just to find out what it was. And um, I wasn't even sure what kind of role I would have, whether I'd be helping or um, I will just be taking it in. And um, I, uh, we, got him shout, we got him shouting and catching from day one. Shouting <laughs> and catching from day one. Well, uh, I mean, uh, John Eaton was very good. So I know John from uh, Manchester Baseball Club. Um, we played against each other for many years um, um, in the league and, and whatnot. Um, and he, he, he was he was a big help in just guiding me and just uh, telling me what to do and that kind of stuff. And I just found myself getting immersed in that in that session. And um, I tried to just watch, but I couldn't really. So I was I was helping to get the balls in and. Um, it, after a couple more sessions, because the sessions then moved to to um, Norman Wells Baseball Diamond, where where we play our home games, um, I found myself getting more and more vo- involved with the. As I found out more about what was required, I, I started. I mean, I'm a, I've been a coach with the with our baseball team, and my coach's mind started to to start whirring and thinking like, so what would you, what what kind of advice would I be given here? And, you know, and, and then a, a, a lot of the, the things that I was doing was um, about feedback, where the balls go in, and maybe just some some little suggestions. But uh, for, for the most part, the, the the players were were really sort of coaching themselves and making those adjustments themselves. And it was it was it was um, it was just a, it's it's been a pleasure to be involved with, and a lot of the other lads in the the club. I mean, we've had quite a few different players that have come down. I'd say like um, Scotty's been down quite a lot, Pips, Ben, um, and, and there's been a few others as well that have come down to these sessions. And I think they've all had a very similar experience to, to what I've had and just, just been intrigued and, and, and want to experience a bit more. 
Yeah, like you said, um, it's it's just a, a fantastic. I mean, I've I've witnessed it down at Manchester Baseball Club, and I've I've never seen anything like it, and it's 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 so impressive, and it's not just for the visually impaired and and blind, is and anyone can get involved as well. Uh, it's a level playing field for those that never heard the episode uh, that I did in the first season with John. Um, Matt, do you want to tell people about uh, what what's actually involved within blind blind baseball? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll I'll give I'll give it a whirl. So, um, in in blind baseball, it's um, five visually impaired players um, on the pitch at any one time. They they occupy just the the left field when the um, when the field and everyone has to wear eye shades. So the level of visual impairment you have um, doesn't matter. So some of our players um, have quite a lot of vision as a visual impairment. They're partially sighted. Some of them, like myself, are, are blind. But because everyone's wearing shades, it's a level playing field. Um, we have had some of the lads at the Trojans come and give it a go. We've thrown some shades on them, got them to to do a little bit of field and a little bit of running just so they can to see what it's like. But actually, within the, the team for, for blind baseball, you're required to have two-sighted players, at least anyway, as, long, as well as other sighted coaches and assistants around the pitch. Um, so... As, as I say, when, you, when you're fielding, you occupy the left field, there's five of you with shades on. Um, you have a sighted second base catcher um, who is, uh, I think, 13 feet further on from the run from first to second base. There's another second base catcher there sighted. So when you pick up the ball as a fielder, you have then got to throw the ball with your blindfold on. You can't see what you're going to listen to that second base catcher call and the aim is to get it there to get the players out. When you're batting, um, there's no pitcher. You actually hold it with one hand and hit it from your hand with the bat. Um, it's got to travel so far. It can't fly through the air because, you know, that would be dangerous. A lot of people with a blindfold and the ball flying through the air. It has to hit the ground to get past a certain area to be in play for the fielders to play. So when batters um, have hit the ball, the first aim is to get through second base. First base has a beeper on it, so you can hear it. You've got to run around first base and then you're running towards second base. Um, at second base, you will have one of your sighted players, and they have a wooden set of clappers in the hands. They are clapping them together, which is a sound you've got to um, follow to get to second base. As you get closer, the clapping should be quicker, um, and you will either shuffle in to step in to the base, um, or ideally slide in um, and get yourself uh, safe. And that's the same from second to third base. You've got another clapper on third base, go into home plate um, this is the really scary bit is there's no noise no sound you've got to run from third to home literally feeling the the the, the dirt uh, track under your feet um which i have to say doesn't always go uh, doesn't always go well amazing incredible and it's even more impressive to witness it and i'm hoping that i'll be able to get some video footage of, of games in action to to show people the spectacle there's blind baseball. Are the balls adapted as well in any sort of way? What, what a fundamental thing to miss. Yes, so the ball is a, is a hollowed out uh, rubber ball. It's got six holes and inside that it's got two bells. So the ball as it's travelling along the ground um, will make a noise. Um, obviously you wouldn't uh, hear it coming otherwise. Brilliant. Uh, Matt, I think like we've got a bit too far ahead of ourselves here and it's my fault for just plowing on with the questions but shall we get to know you a bit bit more first uh, do you want to tell us a bit about your background and, and your family life and how you got invested in all these different sports what led you to setting up savvy yeah, yeah sure i'll, I'll um yes yeah, i can uh, go for that so um uh, i've been visually impaired uh, all of my life as i say these days I'm, I'm more but completely blind so i see silhouettes and shapes and things um, when I was younger, my sight was much better, so you used to be able to read and write and recognise faces and things. Uh, but I've got a condition called retinitis pigmentosa, which is a deteriorating condition. Um, as I say, born with it, and, and actually sport was something I wasn't really very good at when I was younger. I really struggled with it. Um, obviously, the visual impairment didn't help. Um, as I got to being a teenager, um, I sort of accidentally um, found a, a talent for running. So the, the teachers of my secondary school uh, thought I had a bit of potential. Um, so, I, so they put me on the school team, which was a, which was a mainstream um, sighted school, and I decided to give the sport a go. Uh, previously, I'd been asked to do some competitions as a, as a disabled or visually impaired 
uh, runner or athlete and I'd refused. Uh, I kind of struggled with the identity of being a, a visually impaired or disabled person. But after they put me in the school team, I entered one of these competitions, which is Disability Sport England competition. Um, and I found this, this natural talent. Uh, I went on with the, the running to compete at um, World European uh, and even, uh, even competing in the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne in 2006. I found a real talent for it. And that getting involved in that sport helped to, to build my confidence, um, really changed the sort of person. I was very shy and retiring when I was at school. Um, and I, I had a bit of a hard time at school, but getting into sport really helped to build my confidence. Um, so I did, went and did that for a few years. When I, when I got to a certain age, I started a... Uh, having children, my life changed, I'm afraid. So um, in uh, in 2009 was the last time I competed in athletics. Um, it was at the European Championships and the, the eldest of my children was born and, and life changed. But coincidentally, at the same time, uh, I'd set up Savvy Northwest, the, the multi-sports club. Um, at this point, I was doing a little bit of cricket here and there, um, actually having to play my home fixtures in, in Leamington. And being as though I was living in Merseyside, it's quite a long way to go. So we'd seen a bit of a, a gap in what was going on, me and a friend of mine. And that's when we decided to set up Savvy, um, try a few different sports. A lot of them just come a, come along by chance along the way. Um, we, we got involved in some tennis very early on just because it was a new sport that was around. Um, and along the journey of Savvy, we've set up teams, things like the Merseyside Blind football team was something we first set up. We've set up a cricket team in Wavertree. Uh, we currently run a, a goalball team as well out of Merseyside. We do a lot of work with tandem cycling too. So we'll, we'll try and turn our hands to anything really, uh, as well as living our, our lives anyway, because we do it all voluntarily. Um, and the baseball was a, a new project that came up with a link that we had with the Lancashire Lions. So they, the Lancashire Lions are very similar outfits based in Manchester. They also have goalball, cricket, uh, football provision, various different things. And they introduced us to the blind baseball. And we, uh, yeah, got to chat to them. They uh, showed us what it was all about, introduced us to John and Nathan, the coaches at UK BBA, um, and, and we got going. It's fantastic. And, and long may this journey continue and we'll we'll try and support as much as we can and try and get the 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 sport grown as much as we can too. It's the whole point of this podcast is to try and you know increase participation and, and grow the game. And I'm hoping that some of these stories will inspire people at clubs to think we need to 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 diversify a bit more. You know, we've seen the the women's teams coming on board, and let's let's get these, these branches extended further and uh, get some. Th- this this sort of thing is, is is good for teams. So you know the baseball teams out there should see that as an opportunity for them. We, you know we've seen it in you know for example the, the cricket team we set up at Wavertree. They're able to genuinely demonstrate. Um, diversity and what they deliver, and what's yeah. more, they love it. And we, you know, we've had the, we had the same conversations with with the Trojans. Um, and I have to say, they didn't need telling twice. The Trojans have been all over it, as Dave said. They've been volunteers at every session. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. But they're just able to demonstrate that there's, you know, we're, we're not all the same. There's a, there's a whole diverse range of people out there. So let's create opportunities for sport for all of them. Exactly. Dave, and just to, to show people how simple it is, what, what changes do you have to make down at Norman Wells Field to, to let blind baseball take place there? Um, none at all, really. Uh, we've, we've been able to use, at, well, depending on the weather, sometimes um, when there's been some um, some rain, there's, there's, we've just come off the dirt track that we did, uh, the, the paths, um, base paths. That's that only because some of the players are a bit fair weather. That's <laughs> yeah. nothing to do with being blind. They're all just made of sugar. <laughs> but I think that was the, the only thing that um, adaptation that, that we had done. Um, but you can use this, uh, completely the same same diamond, same facilities. Um, and that's yeah. it's, it's the same same track. All what you need is you wouldn't have bases that are raised from the ground because they become a trip hazard. And obviously, you've got you need, you need the the sound emitting device as well. So we're actually we've we've, we've just secured some funding to get some um, adaptations through the from the Italians actually the you know the proper adapted base which would need to be put into to first base for us to use. But um, improvise and as things go, um, you know you can use Bluetooth speakers and even just your voice and a whistle. Um, it doesn't have to be too complicated to just get started. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, that we, we've seen with people. So like I said, with the clappers and other people with like the 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 sirens and stuff, it, it's very very 
um, easy to do, I suppose. So it's not really any excuses. I'd love to see how the, the community takes to this and, and just get it growing. And again, just to see more numbers participating. I'd, I'd be really interested as well, Matt, to know what do you, um, like, I can't, I, I can't think of the word to say that. You're going to say cited, you're going to say yeah, cited. Yeah, cited. Uh, friends think about all these blind sports you're involved in. Uh, one thing I would say is don't be worrying too much about being PC. If you don't mean offence, you don't mean offence. But um, to be honest, my, 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 my friends just, the the sort of used to it, um, really, because I'm just I'm just Matt. So I still do the same old things as I would do. I just happen to have interests that are, that might be different to theirs. And because I'm, I'm visually impaired, I can't just go to the local sort of Sunday league team. There has to be something a bit more organised and a bit more rehearsed, really. But um, yeah, not really bothered. And like my, my children are the same, to be honest. They don't see anything different. So I can come back from um, the Netherlands, uh, a World Cup, which is, it's a big deal. You know, come back with a silver medal, that's really a big deal. Now, my, my kids, particularly my eldest daughter, mentioned it to her friends at school as if it was nothing, because to them it's just nothing. They don't know any difference other than me and my, my friends are all the same. Whereas my, you know, my, my daughter's mates thought it was amazing. Um, but, you know, people, people don't really think anything it's just it is what it is that they're excited because it's 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 high level it's good developments but um i don't you know i don't think it's any different than for anyone else awesome dave do you want to ask any questions or throw anything in well I'd, uh, I'd like to say a little bit about um the some of the thinking from from the the trojans point of view because we the, the, the wider trojan organization 10 years ago we only had one team one team and um since then, we've we've sought to kind of expand the club and make it more accessible to a lot more people. And initially, we we, we did what was the, the 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 logical step. So we started the second team. I saw players who were, weren't getting game time for the first team, and um, I thought, well, this is this is the opportunity now to to start a second team. And from the second team, led the third team. Uh, we went to four teams uh, this season. Uh, we started the softball team where we now we've now got uh, uh, women playing softball and it's also an opportunity for some of our uh, i'd call them retired players uh, I i'm sure they won't mind me, me saying that but they they've come back into active sport again um so this this is very this this um collabor uh, collaboration with um, with blind baseball is absolutely like in in that same approach and we're, we're we're looking forward to where it where it goes so I mean that's that's all that's all I've really wanted to say. I thought um, the international cup is fantastic. It's it was great to be a part of um, the training sessions leading up to that. And Matt, um, just correct me if I'm wrong, but it, was it right that I heard that um, there hadn't been any runs scored by the Great Britain team in previous tournaments or in previous matches? Is that right? But yeah, that that that's right. Uh, um, and um. I don't know whether we should take a bit pride in this, but I, I was the first one to get one. Although that does come with being having the responsibility of uh, of opening the batting. So, but you know what? The, a, anyone in that, in particularly in the France game, we all went out there and uh, and smashed it and really showed people what we could do. But yeah, previously it was uh, the priority was all about getting to, to second and third base, and that had been a challenge enough uh, for such a new sport. Yeah, so it exceeded all expectations. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely, we. I think honestly, we weren't expected to get out the group stages in that tournament. Um, anything would have been a result. So coming away with a medal is a is beyond the wildest dreams. I think. Sure. Well, to be a small part of that in the the lead up, we're, we're made up. Well, phenomenal, and and just let let's not not go unnoticed. There was three Trojans on that GB team, um, which isn't bad going for such an early start. Yeah, fantastic. Definitely, and. Um... Uh, and what, what was the training like before you went out to to Netherlands then? Like you, you said that you had a couple of meetups beforehand. What sort of things did you do for like your, your tournament prep and your game prep? Um, I think it's in some respect there were there were individual things to work on. Um we'd had um a little bit of an outing to Italy in, in May, which is you know working with some of their development clubs. So a few of us newer players, because you know, a lot of us had only just started this season. Um, we'd come away with individual things to, to work on. We went out to play in the friendly in Italy and I, I went out and, and struck out straight away, kicking myself all the way back home. Um, so for me, I was working on just that 
that consistency of, of hitting. Um, having a background in running, running the bases was not it was actually my strength, but just that consistency of hitting for, for me personally. So we all had our individual things. For some people, it was it was fielding and, and throwing. As as a collective, um, we decided that we wanted to to, to field and defend um, you know better as as a team. And actually, that really made the difference in the tournament. That's how we got the draw against the Italians in, in the group stages. As good as we defended solidly as a unit, um, there's an awful lot of communication involved when there's five of you running around with blindfolds on. Um, you've really got to spend a lot of time working together. To so in some respects, you know, hitting the ball you can work on individually. Some degree of throwing you can work on individually. You know, some sort of sprint training you can work on individually. But that communication with each other um, and that sort of defending as a unit, you need to be doing that together. So that's where a lot of the focus was in in the uh, the weeks leading up to the tournament. Um, I just like to add what what really impressed me in those those first a few ses sessions. That whilst there, there are uh, some similarities between the two different codes of the sport, the essence of the of baseball was the same. I just felt it felt like a baseball game. It felt like a baseball activity. It's um, so there's something about the essence of it that was captured in that, and I, I, I thought that was really good. It, do you know it's interesting that Dave? Like, because obviously not being not being someone who knows an awful lot of baseball, you know, my first introduction to the sport was was really the blind version of the game. Um, and yet we come down to watch uh, the Trojans in the, the playoff finals the other week. And it was very easy for, for us to, with a bit of explanation for some of the complications of, of some of the rules, to actually follow what was going on. Um, you know, so we got some of that giving us some audio description on what was happening in, 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 in the finals. Um, and it made a lot of sense. So, yeah, it, it goes both ways, actually. That's brilliant. It's great to know that it's still... Like you said, then Dave, the, the essence of the game still still feels like baseball. Uh, how would you rank it then amongst the other blind sports that you play, Matt? And this being a baseball podcast, you don't have to say baseball at the top if you don't <laughs> do, want do, to. Do you know what? I'll be I'll be really honest with you. I'm I'm really really loving my baseball now. Um, and I'm not saying that just because this is baseball because I love sport. I'm I'm a sporting person. I really really love um, running the bases. Having, having had a background of, of sprinting when I was younger, um, as my sights got worse, I can't go running without a guide, and getting a guide run is not easy. Um, the adrenaline of running those bases, running around that first base, the beeper, and then running as fast as you can um, to some poor second base clapper waiting for me to dive at the feet, that really gets the adrenaline going. Um, I absolutely um, love it. So, so at the moment, that's where my, my heart is in, in, in my sport. It's it's something to be uh, witnessed uh, seeing Matt run to second base. Uh, <laughs> some, some some of some of the lads, like, including myself, we try to do that, and it's just so unnerving trying to run. At, it's, I was I was pretty much just hobbling along really because you're so worried about hitting something that you know it's not there, but it's still in your head. But Matt runs with there's no impediment at all. He just runs and the slide as well. That's that it was a proper slide, you know. It's 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 tr it's trust as well. You've got to get used to the people around you and, and get get used to, to time and that. But you know, people around you aren't they're not there to 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 hurt you or trip you up. It's it's a fear thing. If you put if you've got those shades on, you're petrified naturally. Um, you know, the first time I wore shades was playing blind football years ago and that was really, really unnerving. Um but you know, it's it's it, it is a confidence thing. Um, and hopefully I'll never, you know, trip on someone or something, but you never know. Brilliant. So, Matt, uh, what are the future plans then? So, um, the, the future plans really for, for us at Trojans, we are going to sort of keep going with, with, with what we're doing. You know, we as, we as players are, are still, you know, learning, learning the game. And uh, all of the sighted players and coaches and volunteers we've got involved similarly. So we're sort of wanting to, to keep going with, with what we're doing. Um, but what we need wider than that, and what UK Blind Baseball are, are hoping for, is that we'll get some more clubs in, um, set up up and down the country. You know, we're, we're sort of sneakily hoping that we'll be the first one in Liverpool, but, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. I know UK Blind Baseball... I've been all over the country working with British blind sports in their have a go and taste days, promoting the sport, introducing people to blind baseball. What we need now is those tasters to turn into teams. 
So that's linking in with other teams like we've been able to do so well with, with the Trojans and Liverpool. We want those groups of visually impaired people um, in Swansea, in Sheffield, in Newcastle, wherever these sessions have been taking place. They've been in Exeter, Somerset, Bristol, all sorts. We want um, the teams in the various uh, um, areas across the country linking in with those groups. Um, and I suppose we've got to find a way to get the right people talking. So that's baseball clubs and local providers of uh, you know services and sight loss and, and visually impaired people, really, so that we've got um, we've got competition. So we've got some people to play against. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to make notes as we go because I, I think it's important for myself and like for for us, Dave, and, and other people involved in baseball in this country to try and do what we can do ourselves as individuals and as clubs to try and make these opportunities take, you know. Um, so what what would you want us to do? Like, what what can we do as a, as the baseball community to, to help grow blind baseball as a sport? I think what I would be saying to baseball clubs and, and, and British baseball is to actively engage with UK blind baseball. I know that UK BBA... Um, are up and down the place and they're doing tasting sessions all the time. But if if I was asking the British baseball population to do something, would be actively look for it, actively get involved. You know, I, I know a load of um, lads and girls at the Trojans that have done that and, and they really enjoy taking part in, in what we do. So I'd be saying seek it out and then find out, you know, what are the local organisations, the, the local providers of those sight loss services, because visually impaired people are always looking for, for things to do. You know, I've, I've got the, the pleasure of having lots of visually impaired friends and I now work in, in the sight loss sector um, away from all of my sport. I've got a job and doing that. And there's, there's lots of people looking um, for things to do. You know, getting involved in sport and physical activity is good for the social element of, of life. You know, having, meeting new people. It's good for, for mental health and well-being. It's good for your physical health. Um, so yeah, I, w- I, I would be putting the onus on, on clubs to, 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 to go and seek out UK BBA um, and, and you know really try and learn what it's all about. Not to mention also we, you know as well as clubs, players, we need umpires, we need officials, we need the organisers of you know mainstream sighted baseball to, to, to figure out well what, what do we need to do to put that infrastructure together? You know we're, we're talking about having teams and, and wanting competitions. Uh, we need umpires. We need people there to, to get involved in that. So I'd be saying to the, the umpires across the country, seek out UK BBA, get in touch with John at UK BBA, because I know he's, trying, he's doing some of this work already. Um, but if you're interested in getting involved, seek it out. Yeah, he has been putting a lot of work in, um, seeing down the field. He, he's, he's very passionate about this. Um, and you can go to the website, which is ukblindbaseball.co.uk. There's a Facebook group, UK Blind Baseball Association, Twitter at UK Blind Baseball. There's a YouTube channel, which is well worth subscribing to and checking out, UK Blind Baseball Association. And email address, of course, UK Blind Baseball at gmail.com, which I'll put all the links in there too. And of course, Matt does your own um, uh, saving, sav- sorry, savvynorthwest.com, S A V I N O R T H W E S T.com. All links will be provided in the show notes. Uh, to uh, yeah, Matt, this is this is brilliant. It's all been been absolute gold. It's uh, time to to close out the show, and it's tradition to give the the floor over to the guest. So, Matt Cliff, the the floor is all yours. And uh, Dave, if you are chirping as well, you're also a guest. You you can also have have your say as well. But uh, Matt, uh, take it away. Brilliant. So, no, um, thanks for for inviting me along um, this evening to to talk about this. Um, You'll get the impression from me. I get really, really passionate about sport. Um, it's played a big, big part in my life, and it plays a big part in the lives of lots of people uh, that I know. Um, you know, and it's not just the taking part in sport. It's not just competition. We love just getting involved, meeting new people, um, developing those social activities. Um, whether I'm allowed to say this on the podcast or not, but our recce for every sport we do is where's the nearest pub, where's the nearest bar, where's the nearest place that we can go to, because there's more to it than than, than just the sport. Um, but no, I, you know, it's it's really good to have the opportunity to promote any of these sports that we're into. And I'm an active advocate for saying to people, try anything. Um, but I have to say, I've really, really enjoyed the baseball. So 
you know, you know, honestly, to anyone listening, get involved. If you know someone who's visually impaired, who's maybe a bit unsure about getting involved in any activities, I'm more than happy for anyone to give me a call. They don't have to be from, from Liverpool or Merseyside. Just give me a shout and we can point, point people in the, in the right direction. All about getting people involved. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, Dave, over to you. Um, I'll, I'll just be really reiterating what Matt said about the the power of a sport, the the benefits it can bring, the the connection, um, and I, I would I would hope that the, this this conversation that we're having here continues and ripples out. And if there's any uh, baseball clubs that want to speak to us or start a conversation amongst their own clubs, and like Matt says, then reach out to to the British Blind Baseball Association, get some more information, and maybe some local um, visually impaired or sight loss groups. That could be the start of something that that would would be really beneficial for all, all all the people involved. So I would just encourage people to have a little think about that and see what happens. Yeah, lovely. What a great way to end the show, uh, Matthew, David. Uh, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this, and I must give a big shout out to to yourself, Dave, for for making this happen. You you came up with uh, with this to 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 as a feature. You know, as I said it's something I've been trying to to get more of. Um, the UK blind sport and, and, and women's baseball as well. So thank you so much for, for bringing this to the table and for, for introducing me to Matt as well. Matt, it's been brilliant to, to meet you. Hopefully I'll see you in Liverpool, maybe for a taster myself. More than welcome. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. But you're from yeah. Manchester though, aren't you, Matt? So you're, you'll, be the, you'll be the opposition if we get the competition off the ground. Well, maybe so, but, you know, I, I still like to come yeah. down to Liverpool and see you beforehand so that you don't absolutely. give me too much of a kick in. <laughs> they face each other in the field, you know. I, I can't make it. Can't. No guarantees. I'll be wearing a blindfold. <laughs> yeah. so just, just, just stay out of the way. You'll be all right. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> no, but, but, thanks for having us. It's been great. Yeah. No. Ple- pleasures all mine. Right, gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, this has been fantastic. I'll catch you all soon. Thanks, Matt. Cheers. Yeah.